I want to welcome on my next guest, very special guest. We've got Falcons legend and the franchise all-time leading sacker. Is that, is, that, is that the correct phrase, sacker? Or sack good. leader? Sack good. leader? He gets to the quarterback. Hey, uh, Jonathan Abraham. Jonathan, been going for you. I'm going good, man. I'm good, man. Uh, thanks for uh, hitting me up, and um, I'm glad to be able to talk to you, Zach. Absolutely, absolutely. So I want to kind of get into offseason a little bit. Um, what have been your thoughts on some of the uh, Falcons' moves? And as we get closer to the draft, another pick in the top five. Um, I think I'm waiting till after the draft. Because right, they're saying a lot of people might be gone. Um, a lot of people might, but they haven't. Re- I, I haven't seen them make any really spectacular moves. Nothing, nothing newsworthy. Nothing that you can like look at. Like, oh my God, you know, da da da. So uh, hopefully during the draft they can pick up some good guys. Um, you know, hopefully a, a, another good tight end or maybe a good lineman. I mean, I think they're. I really believe that their whole front five last last year were um, all first round picks, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that, but uh, hopefully they can have some um, a great draft and have a great year. You know, since Drew Brees is gone now, yeah, that should be very tantalizing. They still gonna have Tom Brady down there in Tampa, but in Carolina is kind of if everybody's don't know what's going on in Carolina, who's gonna be the quarterback. So it could be a year for them to have a good season. Do you think it's time to move on from Matt Ryan, or you think he's still got a little bit left in the tank? He's getting there. He's getting there. I, I think um, the fan base is getting kind of weary of him. I mean, you know, ever since the Super Bowl, um, I read some statistics, but they were very bad. It, it wasn't a great record. I can't remember exactly what the record was, but 12 and 20-something. It was – I don't know. I can't remember exactly what it was. But, you know, um, I think uh, Arthur Blank has had such a great relationship with Matt Ryan and – and just the Falcons have had, like, people in Atlanta love Matt, but, you know, it's just kind of like um, they love Matt. They love – I mean, they love the guys there so much they don't want to get rid of. And I understand why. Those guys have been a keystone since Matt got here, you know. So it's tough to let go of such a quarterback like that, especially if you don't know what you're going to get next. So, you know, hold on to him until you feel like it is that time. Um, and he's still putting up, you know – Pro Bowl MVP type yeah. number, so it's kind of hard to say let him go. Um, do you think Julio's is he, he's untouchable, or do you think they move on for him? Because I know Ridley had a great year. Well, I hope not. Um, living in Atlanta, Julio's our guy. You know, not knocking Matt, but Julio is the guy that everyone loves here. You know, people people hate on Matt. People say bad things about Matt, which you know, in regards to Matt, shit is really not his fault per se. But uh. Being an all-star quarterback and getting paid like that, you know, before anybody else getting paid, they expect, you know, a lot from you. So it's going to go on the quarterback a lot. But Julio has been there um, since day one. It's like when he, since he got there, he's been explosive. And to lose Julio in Atlanta would be a big key more. It would be kind of like losing Deion Sanders like back in the day. You know, even though Julio is not as um, as boisterous as that, he's definitely a guy that deserves his statue in front of the, you know, the Mercedes-Benz after, after he's done. Like, the stuff he's done is remarkable yeah. as was, and the person he is person, you yeah. know, you know, you never hear anything bad about him. Most stuff, never. especially how the media is these days, you never hear anything about who they are. I mean, and, and that, that, that's a blessing, you know, that, that yeah. is a big blessing, especially coming in Atlanta. Yeah. No, cause I know, I know there's some stuff going on with Watson. It hasn't been proven. I, at first I was like, all right, this is no, it's true. And then these numbers are kind of scary. But before that, I thought Atlanta would be the perfect situation because he's from Georgia. I was thinking that also. I, I ain't going to lie to you. I thought about it also just yeah. because he, you know, being Georgia. I, I remember yeah. seeing him on the sideline now thinking about it when I was playing. And I thought, I said, ain't that a violation? But now he was only in high school. I was like, <laughs> yeah, he's like a ball. I was like, what the, you know, yeah. what the, what the, you know what's going on? But um, hopefully he can get everything um, yeah. handled. Um, one thing one thing I don't do is uh, try to talk about somebody's situation because I've been in situations. We don't know. We don't know. And, we don't know. And, they definitely, and, and they definitely weren't like what they portrayed as. And yeah. especially how media is now, when one person comes, it's going to be a row for I mean, yeah. I definitely have done my dirt in the past and, yeah. you know, it's stuff that I regret that I know I want to take back. But, you know, the biggest thing he can do now is learn yeah. from it and become a better player and a better person. And also, you got to shrinking up your uh, people around you. Yeah. Like knowing who's who's the right person to be around you. Um, like I I, I remember uh, somebody told me just the other day they was like they really gonna have to walk around with cameras on them twenty four seven, which you, which people shouldn't have to live that way. Nah. So I, I think that's why um a lot of people are kind of 
wait for everything to happen because it's a tough yeah. situation to be in as a person, you know, be like, yeah. we don't know what he going through right now. And, and, and we don't know what the girl's going through either. So I'm yeah. not trying, I got three girls. So I understand yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I've, I, like I said, I've done stuff that I wish I regret. So, you know, cause if you don't know exactly what's going on, just keep yeah. your mouth and let's see what happens. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, this, I gotta let it all play out, but like the, the timing is is bizarre, and that yeah. that the timing is like it looks like there it was it was it, after the first one the timing is like all right maybe they just kind of like trying to just like ruin his reputation and now it's like all right we got to see how this plays out but it's it, but um speaking uh, outside of that are there any uh, do you like any of these quarterbacks in the draft for them potentially take maybe succeed uh, Matt Ryan? Uh no, not really. No, none of them. Not at this point, not not to perceive Matt right now, not not to see it take his job. There, there there's some great quarterbacks out there because think about three four years ago, yeah. we was talking about all those other quarterbacks coming out yeah. and all of them going to other teams. So I don't like to pretty much say that put it on the quarterback because you know you might get a diamond in the rough and yeah. you might find some guy that come out and have a great year. You know what I'm saying? I think about it, even uh, uh Mayfield, like think about it, the first two years were. Like okay. now he, he they showed were turning on they were turning on yeah, that yeah. second year. And, and I don't think Atlanta needs no. a quarterback to really sit back and learn. But even if they do get one, I mean there there's some great quarterbacks out there. I wasn't saying it as in that. I was oh, saying, but right now I think you know trying to find somebody right now to replace him would might be kind of tough. You know, like just because of the stuff he does and um his uh it's, it's his it's his offense right now. Yeah. You know, like I said, he don't make many mistakes. It's just a, it's just a W's that's missing. You know, the win and loss column is what they're missing yeah. right now. They even have a backup because I know Shaw retired. Yeah, uh, that, that's, and Shaw, he was a good, he was a cool dude. He might, you never know though. <laughs> during hey, during training camp, something might pop off. Shaw might be right back in there. That's one thing about Shaw. Yeah. He's always, he's always football ready. So you don't got to worry yeah. about him like not like being there or not being ready. Yeah, because I know a lot of a lot of the mock drafts I've seen, they they uh, pencil in um just Fields because he's a Georgia guy. And I was, like, thinking, I don't know about, if... I was thinking about Justin, and it'd be a good look, but uh, yeah. Justin probably have to prepare to sit for two or three years. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's not going to be just come off the bench. If he's prepared to do that, which I think Justin is going to be, he might be trying to like take his other call for a job. He might try to go straight to Miami or or maybe try to go to Houston if if they um get rid of him or even going to Carolina. Like yeah. if I was a quarterback now, I, I'll be licking my chops for trying to be in Carolina simply because I think they have a nice defense yeah. and um, you have McCaffrey. So you have time for that guy yeah. to, you know, grow. So I, I like Carolina. Yeah, and they they, 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 they they upped up their defense a little bit. I think I saw they saw they got Perryman from the Chargers and they got one other linebacker. They're, they're looking good. I, people sleep on Carolina. Uh, and yeah. then I want to ask you about your other team you spent a lot of time with, the Jets. What the hell is going on with the Jets? What are they going to do with two? The Jets are being the Jets. I mean, I mean, like, it's like ever since Woody Johnson had a team, now his brother, his brother is actually a lot better with football than Woody was. When I was there, we knew what was going on half the time. You know, it was just like, shut up and do your job, you know. But uh, I wish the Jets all looked, man. I promise you, because uh, the Jets put me in their all-time uh, team. So oh, cool. I still, they still got love for me. It surprised, it surprised me too, man. I was like, wow. Really? But they still got a little love of me in New York, and uh, also they gave me my first. Uh, they gave me my first chance at playing football in the NFL. So yeah. I'm just hoping they just turn around. I think that they just got to get that winning attitude back because they don't have like it's like when people. I think I think in the paper we talk about bad about them so much, kind of how we did Cleveland. Yeah, they just gonna have to like show people they can win because yeah. Cleveland had to do that this year. Like it wasn't a, a fact of doing this. It's, it's kind of like. Shut all the outside people yeah. out. When you get here, be proud to be on the NFL team. Don't yeah. worry about like, oh man, I don't like it here. I, I mean, they got a new stadium, they got a new facility. Yeah. I mean, it's nice over there in New York. I went to New. I was like, this is nice. We we stayed in Long Island. They get to live in Jersey. Really? I'm like, I come know. on, man. Yeah, we had yeah, every, lower every taxes game, too. Lower every taxes game, too. Every game was an off game because <laughs> we had to we had to travel every game. Yeah, so they got it good down there now. What what, what do you like? What do you think about our Robert Sala? Robert. Robert Sala, the new Robert Sala for the Jets. I don't really know a lot about him yet. No? I, 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 see him, I see him yeah. and I kind of watch stuff, but I don't really know a lot about him yet. You got to give him a couple more years in the, in the, in the realm, let him build his team like he wants. Because 
a lot of people saying he bad at this, he bad at this, he's not good for this. You know, um, but think about it. They got rid of Ty Bowles. Come on now. Yeah. Ty Bowles, the guy. Ty Bowles, Ty he went down to Tampa. He and shut won. down Mahomes. Yeah. Exactly. Ty Bowles yeah. was a great guy. So it's just like their decision making sometimes is a little off, but they have the players. So you see a lot of times people leave the Jets and they go to be great. Like what? What's the D tackle that with the Giants now? Um, I can't oh, think. He just of got anymore. paid. Leonard Williams just got paid. He got Leonard paid. Williams. Look, Leonard. Look, they got rid of John Abraham. They got rid of Revis. <laughs> they brought him back though. They got rid of Laverne Cole. They brought him back though. I mean, you got to think about it. They did a lot of things that you would question sometimes. So I think if they can get some, they they got to get some players that they're gonna stick with for like 10, 12 years. Like regardless of what's going on. Like, look, they got rid of Adams. And I know he was yeah. just he wanted to win, but yeah, like that kind of guy you got to make happy, and I'm not saying in a bad way. Because I remember when I was there, we made sure Curtis Martin was happy, Vinny Testaverde, Wayne Corbett, like all those, and like Mawai, Kevin Mawai, and pretty much the whole offense line. We made sure they was happy. Like yeah. defense back in the day was kind of like ah, uh, you know, you might be here, you might not, but <laughs> they they made sure their offense was happy. So they got they got to pick like okay, we're gonna be a defensive team or offensive team, and we're going to stick with it, and they're going to know the Jets as a straight defensive team or a straight offensive team, whether it's running back, which I think they should get a running back. And kind of when I, when, I, when, I, when I had Curtis, we didn't we, – like, Vinny was good, but Vinny didn't have to – you know, we knew we had a 1,000-yard rusher in Kirk every year, so we didn't have yeah. to worry about it. So if they can get them a, a premium back, you know, like, and really, like, stop worrying about the quarterback as much right now, get you a premium back, then you'll see how good your linemen are. And then you can get you a quarterback to fall into it, you know. Well, they got Frank Gorse. They got a guy for the next 15 years. So they're good. Yeah, they're good. He's a great, but he's not – they don't – you know, he's not a guy that can bust it for well, he's, he's 26. ADR. He's 26 now, right? Frank yeah, Gorse? yeah, yeah, yeah. 26, 26 twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what, do, what do you think of May, – uh, not Mayfield, damn Darnold. Do you think you ready to move on or you want to see a little bit more? Uh, Me personally, I'm ready to move on from – Really? But like I said, give him a running back. Like he's not ready to be Peyton Manning. He's not ready to be Eli right now. You need we need somebody that you know that can take some pressure off him. Get Marshawn Lynch in there for a couple more years. He'll play. He'll play. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm for real. Like get give him give him a mainstream running back, which I'm not sure who the good running backs in college was last year. I didn't really. Kid from Bama's pretty good. Najee Harris. What about Eaton? Eaton, Eaton uh, the guy oh, from, um, from Clemson. Eaton, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's get him. Get him and um, face your like. Okay, put Sam. Okay, like Mayfield. Okay, he got Chubb right. Yeah. Now the offense really opened up for him. So give him somebody that they can, like people scared that okay they're gonna run the ball this play. Get me a hundred yard runner again. Get somebody to get you fifteen hundred yards maybe the first three years. Then the quarterback can relax. And you know, and then play, and then play. He can learn how to play football and not have to worry about. Because a lot of these quarterbacks now, I think, I gotta win, I gotta win, I gotta win. Yeah. You know, like Mayfield when he first got in there, I gotta win, I gotta win. Now it's a yeah. balanced offense. No matter what you say for us, a balanced offense. You, you like you, you know, he can pass. You know, he got great receivers, but also they can hand it off, and yeah. and still hurt you either way. Yeah. And then what? What about uh, Quinn and Williams? What do you what do you thought about them through two years? Uh. I can't really call it. It's kind of tough because uh, I've seen him play, but I ain't really seen him play. Interesting. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've seen him play, but I haven't really. Seen, like, I, he's a big dude. I mean, so yeah, he can move too. Yeah, but that don't mean nothing if you can't do it on the field. You know, <laughs> you know, you know how that is. That's what everybody says. Great pick. I mean, came out yeah. looking good, and this is a year to definitely prove that you're worth that big contract you're going to want. And everybody know, like, this is a year, so you got to really stand out. Ain't no if and buts about it. You know, I think, well, this is his third year? I think this is going into his third year, because I know they took the kid from Louisville last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To tackle. Yeah, yeah stay and, healthy and, um, and stay humble like he's been, because he's been pretty humble. You know, he's, he hasn't been he hasn't been saying too much. He hasn't been trying to be a – you know, a superhero said, I need all this, I need that. But it is kind of yeah. a year to be a superhero and trying to show off. And then uh, one last uh, currently question for you. Wh which, like, edge rusher have you seen over the past year that kind of just blows you away that you're like, damn, like, this dude could play? Uh, I, well, 
I haven't seen anyone. You talking about in college or in the pros? In, in the pros, like a guy maybe not the most highly tatted guy that you see him, you see him pop on on Sunday. You're like, damn, like league ain't ready for him. I can't even lie, man. I really want to see uh, Von Miller come back. I yeah, watched, I watched a lot of guys play, but I really want to see what he has to do this year. I was kind of watching him on the offseason because he lost the whole year, and for yeah. an NFL player to lose a whole year, yeah. like. That, that, that's when that dog really get in. I mean, I got when I got hurt the next year, I wanted to, you know, max out. So for me, I want to see what he is this year. You know, hopefully he'll still be in Denver where it's home for yeah. him now. Um, but if not, Atlanta, go get him. Like, because they've been kind of – I heard them talking about trade rumors or something like that. And I, I maybe. They're just talking because, you know, you know how it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course. Kind of altercation of – Prior to the season, and sometimes yeah, he's, I think he's fine. They said he's fine now. Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah, it's, I mean, he's fine. He's fine. Yeah. He's fine. But yeah. if I was Atlanta, make a little trade and get him, and have yeah. somebody that, that people in Atlanta would love to come watch, yeah. like Von Miller, and yeah. have him like he's still in his prime, and having somebody yeah. you can you can reside with three, four, five years, having yeah. him and uh Garrett, oh, that'll be that'll be amazing. Like you know, like they got they got uh, they had a. Uh, we had, they had they had a lot of premium pass rushers. They had Beasley but, um, and he's he's gone. Well, Beasley, Whatever. I think Beasley, I think Beasley should turn, go to tight end. Really? <laughs> yeah, he's an athlete. I like him at a tight end. He don't really look comfortable <laughs> playing defense no more. I, I can see him like literally. I can see him being a tight end because I watch him play. I watch him play like I watch him play like D line now. He don't look yeah. excited. He don't look like he kind of into it. Like he don't he don't look. I mean, and I'm, I'm not saying he ain't a hard worker or nothing like that. So I hate yeah. to try to say take stuff off him, but I guarantee you yeah. put him at a tight end, put him in a new position, something new, because he looked bored. If you watch him, he looked yeah. bored. Like he kind of like, no, because you see how he, he had a great yeah. year. Then his numbers just went down. They stuck with him, gave him like 16 million for that one year. Yeah. Stuck with him. But you've never seen that fire in him. I don't know if it's the defensive schemes he in or I'll move the tight end seriously. Like yeah, I'm, I'm, I know it sounds bad, and yeah. I'm you, he's, he was a heck of a pass rusher. He had that one good year. He still got some good years. And you seen the guy yeah. like ripped up? Jack, hey, put him, put his hand in the ground, see if he can catch. I'm like, I don't even know where is where is he now? Is he, is he, he was on team, but I heard that didn't they cut him or something like that? I, I'm I, not sure. He was fantastic. Sure they had they had yeah. him and Clowney. That was ridiculous. And. And I'm I'm waiting to see Clowney this year too. I want Clowney to really to bang bang this year because I yeah. need him because he 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 a Carolina guy. Yeah. And I want to see I want to see him go out on top because he's he lived off his name enough. And I ain't trying oh, to yeah. say it in a bad way. No, of course. Like, we want to see him, like just take over. Like everybody, like literally every year, people be like, man. And I, it's not just me. Like people yeah. around the league want to see that 15, 16 sack from him, and um, because he's he's made I think four or five Pro Bowls just you know, yeah. you know off stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, we want to see yeah. you just like yeah. dominate one year. Just give me one good year, like one year, and just. Do you think you know, it's his health? Do you think he still wants it, or do you think it's his health? Because like, but see what, how how Clowney was even in college. He's so laid back. Yeah. You know, he's just a natural athlete. Like you see him doing stuff, it, it don't seem like he's really into it, but it is. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and you never heard anything bad said, a uh, teammate say anything bad about him. So it's not, I don't think he don't want it, but I think he's, he's just clowning. You know, he's just, he's just him. Yeah. You know, some people just have that, you know, like e even with uh, Beasley, Beasley was just a laid back guy. You don't really see them get too excited and they get excited here and there, but that's just yeah. them. The only guy who doesn't like clowning is that guy in Michigan. He knocked into next week. So he, yeah, that was, um, no, first of all, it was a bad call on them. That they should, they should, it shouldn't have been the first time. That's why they messed up. It's all their fault. It would have never happened. It would have never happened. That would have, that was the biggest play ever, though. Yeah, the only because I, I remember last year I was looking at some films because I remember when he was with um, the Seahawks for two years ago, and I remember when they were matched up against the Packers in that game where there was like the it was kind of like the 50-50 call on the on the first down they're like I don't think Jimmy it was Jimmy Graham it was like I don't think get the first down Clowney they had him in pass coverage and then like it's like a split second I don't know who told him to be in pass coverage and then all of a sudden split second they're like all right get the quarterback and as he got it Jimmy Graham was wide open and everybody's, everybody's talking like Clowney doesn't know what he's doing I'm like what the hell are you doing what is this scheme but he's still got it he's got to get first I think yeah. he's still free agent he's still free agent uh, yeah um like I guess what you just said is what a lot of people are looking for is he still wanted and a lot yeah. of people might be waiting close to a season. You got a season yeah. vet that you know can uh 
And then he got hurt, I guess, last year. And then a lot of stuff like that started juggling around in people's heads. And you see the numbers go down in players like that. Like I said, I want to see him come back. And 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 it wouldn't be bad for Atlanta to get him, too. I mean, it wouldn't be a bad look. He right three hours away. He'd be right at home. His family could come around, get, keep him grounded. Because I know when I was in New York, uh, I wasn't really grounded. Like, not saying I wasn't happy, but I wasn't the happy I was when I came to Atlanta because it was three hours away, a lot of family coming around. I wanted to play hard every game. I wanted to make sure that I don't, you know, I want I wanted to be there for everything. So something like that would be good. If they can get them cheap or, you yeah. know, for a reasonable price, I want to see yeah. why not. And incentives, it may say, hey, you 10 sacks will give you the extra money. They just make it worth exactly. his wild. Yeah. And like so, I said, with, with Grady there, I think any yeah. anybody who played with Grady in Europe, 50% good pass rush, you're going to get to 75 or 100 because they got to watch him and just come around the cone. It ain't, gonna be, it ain't that hard. Yeah. And I think that's that one dude, I forget his name. He went to like a like an Ivy League? I'm trying to, but Foyer, like Foyer something? Is he a linebacker or DN? I forget his name. Like, uh, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about 54? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's, he's a linebacker. He's from St. Louis. Yeah, because I know because I was talking to um, Gus Ferrat, and he Gus Ferrat coached him and Zeke in St. Louis in high school for a year. Yeah, and yeah, I, I, he, yeah. Well, yeah, that's the cat there. Yeah, yeah, five four. Yeah. yeah, I like him. I like his passion. He um he plays with a lot of heart. He yeah. reminds me a lot of Stephen Nichols. So every time I look at, it, I think of Stephen Nichols because <laughs> they got the same <laughs> they had the same number. They shaped alike and everything. Yeah. So I want to ask you a little about your career a little bit. Um, how did you end up at uh, South Carolina? Uh, all all all, all truth be told, I was gonna go to Clemson. But uh, my mom wanted me to go to South Carolina. She didn't like uh, the coach at Clemson, and she didn't feel comfortable me um, going to Clemson. She pretty much told me, if you go to Clemson, I won't never come see you. So me being a mama's boy, I chose Carolina. Um, Win-wise, it wasn't the greatest choice, but um, the people I met there and um, the relationship that I made there really, um, you know, made me a, a tougher person. You know, losing 21 straight games, and still playing hard and going to the league. Um, Lou Holtz did a good job of telling them I was a great player and a, and a great person. Uh, and he got me in the first round. And I went like 13th overall on the on 11 team. So, you know, that was pretty good. Do you think uh, 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 South Carolina is, is an underrated SEC town? Um, I don't think we're underrated. Uh, I think we're getting better now because we got a lot more people from South Carolina staying in South Carolina. Okay. Yeah, all our big players used to go to Florida or go to Tennessee or go out of state, but now we're staying in state, so that's why we're we're doing a good we're doing a better job of winning now. You know, we'll get elite and we can start stealing people from Alabama, stealing people from Florida, like some of the top recruits. You know, once we start doing that, we'll really be good. But right now, I think um, we're not underdogs. We're just we're dealing with what we got. You know what I mean? Like not not in a bad way though, but you know. And we keep flipping coaches now. Yeah. And um, it's kind of tough when you don't have uh, that agenda that, that can stick in there. And I think we got to do a better job of getting a lot of the older players back into yeah. the scheme of the games and stuff. I know uh, my last uh, coach, uh, Muschamp, he didn't really have a lot of old players there. And yeah. I don't think uh, I don't think they understand that a lot of younger players, they want to see the old players that went to the NFL and had some success, even if they're not you know, talking to us or being around, yeah. just having that kind of aura. Like you go to yeah. Miami, you go to Florida, you go to Kentucky, you go to Alabama, you see Alabama, it's on the sideline, you see one of their prime yeah. players. Go to USC, you might see Snoop Dogg on the sideline. See, stuff like that is what, no, stuff like that is what get people yeah. in recruiting. And yeah. um, I think if we start recruiting, you know, getting getting the big name players that we've had, you know, we got George yeah. Rogers, we got Shannon Sharp, we have yeah. people like that that played in the NFL and you know, with Shannon Sharp should have been in the Hall of Fame, but it's not yet. But uh, we have a lot oh, of Sterling, guys. Sterling, 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 Sterling. Sterling. I'm gonna be like Shannon. Shannon got in. Yeah. I'm sorry, Sterling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sterling Sharp. I'm sorry, right? <laughs> Sterling. Yeah, we had some some big name players. They, yeah. they have gone. Even, even the people we have now, like Jonathan Joseph. You know, we have we have big name guys. He's still playing. He's still playing. <laughs> Unless he retired this year, we got Stephon Gilmore, defensive player of the I year. Forgot he went there. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure he comes around the campus. But we got a lot of guys that played. But, you know, they, they might have didn't play 15 years like me or nothing like that. But we have guys that have played that have a lot of things. So hopefully we can get them in. And I heard that our new coach is doing a lot better. I, I, who did you guys, I, I, who'd you guys get? Who'd you guys get as a new coach? Beamer. From where Beamer. Was he? Beamer. Was he? That's, uh, you know Beamer from uh, Virginia Tech? 
his son. Okay. You, you, yeah, you like you like it? Thank, okay. I think Shane, Shane. Yeah, we got him now. So he's that hurt well from the from the grapevine. I know a few of my old classmates and a, a few guys I knew that went to University of South Carolina got hired for jobs there now. So I'm already happy about that. I see a lot, I see a lot more interaction between Gamecocks. You know, you got a lot more people that were there in the past that are coming back and feel comfortable coming back. Yeah. That's the big thing. Like whenever you want to go back to school, you got to feel comfortable. Like let's say if I'm in Columbia, which I have a house there, and if I want to go work out at the facility, it shouldn't be a problem. You know, as long as Is I ain't bringing those. Did, did it, did oh, it I, don't know, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I haven't gone. I haven't gone. <laughs> Man, I'm fat. I'm fat now, bro. I'm fat yeah. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nah. But but if you want to go, if you want to go, and um, hopefully we'll we'll do better about getting players in the game. I know yeah. one of my big thing was when I came to a game, it was so hard to get in the game. And, you know, being yeah. an ex-player and, yeah, being yeah. an ex-player and ex-NFL player, like, getting in the game was so tough. It was like, you don't want to come back. And not saying it in a bad way because I don't know exactly what they had going on, but small things like that can really bring, like, a lot of people back. You know, yeah. it, it'll bring some people in the fans that want to like, – they old people in there. Like, they're young yeah. people that want to be young. There a lot of old people like seeing us old guys in there, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, it's- because I know, speaking of that, you brought that up. I just thought of Patrick Ewing last week in Madison Square Garden. They're like, don't you know who I am? That's my number right there. Like, that's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. But fun. you know, um, a lot of people that work there don't know about the sport. A lot of times they don't know about the sport, you know. So that's one thing that people got to also remind. Like, yeah. people, they, they come there for regular jobs. They are not yeah. watching the game. Yeah. They're not doing like that. But, you know. Yeah. Now, this is what they got to do. All professional college sporting events, they got to have, like, a list of legends. And they give it to every employee. Say, hey, if you see this person on campus, they're good. Don't even yeah. ask. Don't even yeah, don't, you gotta, don't ask. You got to, yeah. well, you know, that's a lot to do with, because uh, I haven't been to the Knicks game in forever. I don't know if they even no got No reason to. No reason to. I don't know if they have a face, like his face on it somewhere or something like that, or, you know, but you got to have something like that so they can kind of see. I know. You should tell people that work there, though, for real. Though. You should be like, this is him. This is him. This is him. You know, just know who they are. These guys are legends. So, you know, if you see him, hey, Mr. Ewing, you know. Yeah. So stuff like that that they should know. Hey, Spike Mr. Lee, Brady, how are you doing? They told yeah, Spike yeah. Lee. They told Spike Lee he couldn't. They were like, "Where would you ticket?" Like, I'm, I come to the games more than you do. Um, exactly. So, no, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Are, are, there any, uh, are there any? Are there any um, Gamecocks that are going to be in the draft this year? You're looking forward to seeing in the next level? Uh, can I literally say all of them? I just love to see because uh, um, every I just feel like we don't get enough credit for as many people we put in the NFL. You know, um, because you know, uh, I'm looking. I'm looking at Joe Horn. Well, Joe Horn's son, JC. Oh, that's his son. Yeah. Oh, the corner. Yeah. He's yeah. Polite. Yeah. He's now nah, we we looking for him to do good things. I talked to Joe, and Joe is just ecstatic. And I told Joe, man, you only understand how I, I said Joe. I would never know how that feel because I got three daughters. So <laughs> I like, man, to, to have all that, and you know, Joe is still such a humble guy. He was like, yeah, you know, my son want to do this and do that. But I'm like, I like Joe, enjoy it, man. Just try to enjoy it because right now you might not get the chance again. You know, like, dude, you got a son that's going in like top, yeah. hopefully real high. I think he's going to be a first rounder. Yes, yes. He's going to play well and he's going to put his okay. neck out. Um, like I said, if you know his dad, you know him. If he, tell, him tell him to come to D.C. Say, hey, I'm only I'm only playing for Washington. We need a corner. Like, we got to yeah, we got Kendall Fuller and we got um, William Jackson, but we need a corner. Y'all got, y'all got uh, a name yet? No, and it's driving me nuts. I'm like, I kind of like the Washington uh, football team, though. It's kind of WFT. I mean, like, it's fine if you root for other teams. I, I see it. I feel like you're playing. They're playing the Globetrotters, just for, like the the other team, or like it's like the time the team that like the, like the old Navy sells the football shirts or Washington football team. Get them. Like that's not a team, but it's it's it, 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 it. They need to do something. I understand you need to change the name, and I think they're changing it next year. But like they need something. Because who do you root for? Oh, I root for the Steelers. Who do you root for? Football team. You sound like an idiot when you say that. It, you can't. It's, it's wild. It's unbelievable. Um, what, what was your draft process like? Uh, my draft process was, it wasn't weird. It was just, uh, it's a lot, I think it's a lot easier now than it was back in the day. You know, uh, cause when I, um, my last game, I played Clemson and I pretty much, didn't, I pretty much didn't go back to class after that. You know, a lot of times, um, I think now people are a lot more into school. 
And and I, I I I'm I'm so happy like that now because a lot of times we were in classes that weren't going to lead us nowhere, and I could see these guys being very you know, more intelligent, doing more things with their uh, degrees and stuff. And that's one thing I, I really love about the college football game. Now, I see so many young people, you know, the, when I when I look at people, I see economics or I see like uh, pre-med or something like that. I'm like, wow, because, you know, we were like just. So did you what, what was what, what was that like? Do you guys did you have people doing stuff for you or was it just like we don't have time? No, I did. We did the work, but it was just like we did enough to get by. You know, because you know people went in criminal criminal justice, Afro American studies. And UNC was Swahili. I remember that UNC basketball. They were like Swahili, and they're like, "Hey, do you know any words?" I'm like, "Nah." I'm like, oh. I took I took Swahili one time, but uh, my my thing was they made it clear to me that I was there to play football, and I'm glad now that they're doing more to get these athletes out of there. So, during my draft time, which I should have finished, I was only 13 credits away. I could have finished, you know, if I would have stayed in the class, but I dropped classes. And straight just went to working out, working out, working out. When I went to the draft, I had like LeVar Arrington as a um, as a roommate. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Uh, I didn't run at the draft. So they uh, did my personal, my personal workout was my workout. And I had a bad shoulder. So I only benched like 16 times. Uh, but I ran like a 441. So that was enough for them to be like, yeah, we kind of, he might be all right, you know? So it was kind of cool though. It was cool. But we had a lot of people come watch me and watch a lot of other players like Arturo Freeman, Ray Green, and um, which all of us ended up getting drafted uh, okay. or going to an NFL team. And But draft day was pretty much just me and Sean Ellis because uh, we, we had the same agents. Sean went 12, I went 13, and both of us went to New York. So for me after that, it was just like, it was on and popping. But one thing I one thing I would say is watch who you uh, get as representation, you know, because me and Sean had the same representation. Uh, they're no longer, they're no longer um, ages or nothing like now. But they were some, they were some terrible really? guys. Man. Yeah, really? and I, I see now the NFL doing a great job yeah. with that. Also, I see a lot of a lot more instructions to who to deal with and who not to yeah. deal with because. Well, yeah, we had a terrible. Age. I had fired them after my third year, man. It was it, that was one of the probably, you know, people say the biggest mistake of your life. <laughs> yeah, that's probably one of my um, yeah, that that one one of my most regrettable moments. I have a lot of moments I regret, yeah. but if I can change something, like you know, people say I changed this, that, this. I probably did yeah. a little some more when it came to my first agent because they did some. It was some stuff that me and my uh, me and Sean was talking about, like we could write a book about the stuff they did because it was so much illegal stuff and what's the wildest illegal. thing you can say that's not going to get any it, 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 they're, they're probably scumbags but what's the wildest thing you can say to be like hey i'm glad i'm no longer with them uh i can say when when one of my uh agents uh asked me for some money and they took like a hundred grand how much did they ask for they asked for like he's like, oh can i borrow some money i'm like all right cool because usually like he Asked for like ten thousand or something like that. Okay. So I'm thinking it's gonna be ten thousand because he gave me yeah. ten thousand one time. So I'm like, cool. And then he took like a hundred grand. I was like, what? Well, this is out of my rookie contract too. This is out of my rookie contract. And uh, I was like, what the hell? So I'm figuring they're gonna pay it back. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking like, oh, they're gonna pay it back or take it out of their fees or something like that. Yeah. But no, nah, it was the whole hundred grand. And also, they they put me in some bad investments. Some real. Um, I almost lost like uh, almost lost a million dollars because they uh. I think I ended up losing uh, probably like 500 grand from that though. They uh, put me in a bad investment I didn't know about. And um, they borrowed some money on my money. So they took a million that I had, invested it and borrowed a million on it. And this right around 9-11 happened. <laughs> and when 9-11 happened, you remember how everything sank and I still had to pay the million dollars back that they borrowed. So, you know, it, it, was, it was a lot of grimy, just stuff that you'll be like, Dude, yeah. really? And I'm like, man. And then also, like, and another thing, my uh, la my last year in um, no, my fifth year, the year before I got a, uh, year before I got a uh, franchise. Yeah. Uh, I was I was broke. I was broke. Like I had enough money to um, I had enough money to pay my bills, but I didn't have no money to do nothing else with. Because I called and asked them for money. They was like, yeah, you don't have. I don't have. What you talking about? Well, if you I'm like, hold on, this don't make no sense. What you talking about? So I had to borrow some money from my like, state farm or something like that, like twenty five grand to make it to the. Yeah, Jake. Season. You had Jake from the commercials with Chris Paul. Jake, you call yeah. him up. Yeah, it was all up at my grill. 
what what would what were they investing in? Just 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 bad things or like Blockbuster? What the hell were they investing in? It was um it was just bad. It was it was young guys wanting to party. Like I was worrying about hanging out and not worrying about the money at the time. You know, I was like, yeah. I'm cool. My mom had a house. Right. And everybody was taken care of. So I wasn't really worrying about what was going on with my money. I wasn't paying yeah. attention to it. That's wild. That's unbelievable. And then I assume, yeah, you said they're probably they're what, what are those guys doing now? You, you have no idea? They just off the uh, where do you even find well, them? One of them still one of them still get caught up in scams now. One of them passed <laughs> away. <laughs> one of them passed away, and I'm not sure where the other guy is. He's probably involved. Um no, nah, he's probably involved in the other guy passing away. He's like, <laughs> um so when when you get to the Jets, was it kind of like a culture shock being like being in New York, or was it pretty easy for you to kind of get adjusted? Uh, it was hard for me. It wasn't hard, but it, it was different for me because I never had that much free time in my life. So the culture shot didn't really bother me because you don't understand we was in Long Island. Okay. Long Island is nothing like New York. Yeah, people understand. People are like, oh, you were, we was in Long Island. We wasn't in the city. Okay. So it wasn't really like we had to worry about the big lights and all that stuff yeah. like that. We, uh, I, I, I can't even... Um, was it like I'm far trying. off Long Island? Like near like the resorts and yeah, stuff? Yeah, or how? Hofstra. Hofstra. Oh, we really? was on Hofstra campus. Yeah, we was on Hofstra campus, and it's like Long Island. Like literally, it's just long. if you've ever been to Long Island, it's Long Island. I'm trying to think of something, and because I used to be in Baltimore, and I used to be in um, I used to be in Oak. I mean, I'm in Oxon Hill a lot, so yeah, yeah. I know a little bit about uh, DC area. But uh, so it's kind of like how Oxon Hill was. Kind of, it, it's about like that. It wasn't really a lot of stuff to do around there. So, so, so it's not New York. So, well, it is now, but it's not. It was back in the day at all. Wow. And then did they move closer to like wh- where are they now? Uh four oh four. They're in Jersey now. They're in Jersey okay. now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so their practice facility is in the um is in the stadium now. So that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, it's pretty good now. That's nice now. It's really nice now. So who was your first sack? My first sack, I can't oh uh uh Bletso. Really? Yeah, Drew Bletso. Drew Bletso. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. My first set was Drew Bliss. So, um, like I was saying, uh, and actually, uh, I was in the game that Tom Brady ended up coming in. Um, I wasn't on the hit, but I was running towards the hit. So I got like the full impact of it. It was, man, <laughs> that hit was one of the, like, I, I've seen a lot of hits in my days, but that probably one of the most crucial hits I ever seen. It was, it was, well, it was Sean Ellis first and Mo Lewis hit him at the same time. It was like, I ain't never heard a hit like that in my life. I was like, color, oh, like it literally was so, like, I don't see how he even, I think he came back in the game too for a second and they took, ended up taking him out, if I can remember. But uh, that game right there was, uh, I ended up being in the classic game, you know, Tom Brady took over. So, you know, his first, like, not start, but his first game, you know. That's why, that's unbelievable. Did you guys win the game or did Brady pull it out? We won that game, then they beat us the second time. Okay. Yeah, the second time they came back, and that's when Tom was on the road, and that's when they won the Super Bowl that year. Wow. That's what. Um, what was it like matching up with like um, Curtis Martin and Braxton every day? Uh, we didn't touch Kurt, so you know, <laughs> you know, you have a star running back. Don't get it twisted. There's <laughs> nothing like you see on game day. You don't hit live practice. I think Kurt was in his probably seventh or eighth year, if I'm not sure, seventh or eighth year. I can't remember exactly what year. But he was a little older then, so it was like, don't touch Kurt. <laughs> don't touch Kurt. Like, Kurt, like, I think he went 10 years straight with a 1,000 yards rush. Wow. And I got, to, uh, I got to be there for, like, five years with him. He was he was, he was, he was just um, – dude had so much faith and so much uh, determination. He literally played, like, a whole year with a, a knee with no MCL, like, bone to bone. Play the, play the whole – it was like, yeah, you ain't going to be able to play this game. He's like, playing. He strapped up and played. Kurt was a – he was a different character. He was a very clean-cut, like, nice guy. When he got the pads on him, he was just like – you would thought he'd been like, oh, but he still was just a nice guy. <laughs> like, he never talked trash, never did anything like that. He was just, like, one of those, like, love the game with so much passion. But if you if you talk to him, like, hey, how you doing? What's up, man? This character was this one, one like a smooth, like a smooth guy. He was just smooth as I don't know what, man. That's why. Um, I saw that there were in your draft class, you guys had four first rounders. Yeah, we had uh Sean Ellis was 12, and uh I came next, Chad Pennington and Anthony Beck. 
I think we all got 10 years in the league too. Um, well, 10 plus. I think we all got 10. I think Chad got right at 10 or 11. I think yeah. Beck got 10 or 11. Sean got 12. I got 15. <clears throat> yeah. So, but all, all of us end up having um some pretty long That's career. Awesome. That's what. Was the how how big was your rookie class? Was it did you just have a bunch of first or there was there like a lot of guys in that draft? Yeah, we, we had a few other guys. I think we had um we had Lavernius Coles. Wow. Everybody forget about him. He was kind of like a first round pick for us, he even though great. he was in the third round. But he ended up being like a first round pick for us too. So actually, they could say we had five first round picks. Because usually when they always bunch us up together, they always have Lavernius in there somewhere because all that came in one draft. We had a couple more guys, um, but. They, they didn't end up staying on the team as long, uh, have as much tenure as uh, we did, though. Interesting. What was it like matching up with um, DeBrickashaw Ferguson in practice? He's, I think he's very underrated. I actually People never played against him. I was going really? by him. Yeah, I was really? going. Really? He came, like, the year after I left, I think. I was going. I, I never uh, – I went against him in uh, – I went against him in a uh, Pro Bowl, though, and he, uh, he pancaked me. Really? I can say that. Though. Yeah, he tricked me. I told him, I said, all right, this is – I got like, yeah, man, they're going to be uh, – you're gonna be chill, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, he was out there <laughs> playing hard as I don't know what, man. Now he was a great, he was a great player though. I actually got yeah. to play him. I got to play against him in a game, and I got to play against him in um thing. But he's a, he was a great guy. Now you just see him now though, man. He's slim and trim, man. He, What's he uh, doing he now? I mean, he's off, he's off the grid. I haven't heard from him. What's he strength doing? coach. He's like a oh, cool. assistant strength coach for the Jets. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was embarrassed. I came in there looking all about like fat and stuff. And I walked up on him. He was all slim and trim. I'm looking I was like, good Lord, that boy take care of this stuff now, man. Is that the only DeBrickashaw you've met to this day in your life? In my life. Yeah, the I only one. I was like, I was like, when they, when they said it's DeBrickashaw, like it was a family name. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's no, the only he's, under, he's, he's, under, he's underrated. Um, who's the toughest tackle for you to get through in your entire career? Uh, the toughest tackle I had. I had, I had, a, I had a couple of them, I think. Um, Jonathan Arvin was pretty he was he was tough because he was so big. He was massive. Yeah. Um, you should know a little bit how I'm a bit like Baltimore. You should know a little bit about uh, John. Funny funny thing about Jonathan, I didn't remember a couple of years ago. He he I know a lot of the Ravens lived right like a couple of neighborhoods over. He ran out of um, candy one year in Halloween. Started uh, autographing um, trading cards, and just giving it to all the kids. It's pretty cool. So. Yeah, good dude. He was a real good yeah. dude. Um, the toughest though, oh, I can't think of his name right now. He was he played for Seattle. Uh, oh, Walter Jones. There you go. Yeah, Walter was a beast. That guy, I couldn't none of my moves could work on him. I ain't, I, I never got. I think I got a sack on um on Big O, but uh that guy there was yeah Walter. He was he, he like uh him going in the, in the, in the Hall of Fame was just like yeah that that dude. Hey, when I said he was a monster man, he was he he was true probably the best like a uh, athlete. When it comes to being an old tackle, like being able to do everything, it was definitely lost. Who who did you kind of model your game after? You know what? I had to find my own way. You know, everybody said you, you can be like him, you could be like him, you could be like him. I think I took a bit from everybody. Um, you know, speed rush, um, power rush, spin move. I could do it pretty much all of it, but uh, I think I just, I, I think I made myself. I don't, I, I think I, I tried to be like a lot of those guys, but I, I wasn't, you know what I mean? Like trying to be like a Lawrence Taylor, trying to be like a, you know, it's it just like trying to be like a certain guy, like being like a Derek Thomas, it sounds good, but you got to find your own way. That's why I think a lot of these um younger guys try to mold their game out of people, but they got to find their own game. Yeah. Cause uh. You can say Von Miller is like so and so and like this, but if you watch Von Miller, he got his own game. Yeah. If you watch uh, Julius Peppers, you can say he's like that guy, but if you watch him, he has his own game. Jared Allen, like all the great guys, if yeah. you really watch them, Michael Strahan had his own game. Like if you watch these guys, everybody have a different game. Like you can see them like maybe have small, even Reggie White going all the way back to the great guys. Yeah. Like not 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 seeing like people that can rush the pass as we have yeah. them now. You see a lot of guys. The only person I really see this stand out from everybody to me is Von Miller because he he does like yeah. he does his own thing. Like you can't you, you can't really see anybody yeah. do his moves at, at his size. You know, I, I see a lot less of I guess um originality out there. 
I mean, it's working for a lot of guys. I see a lot more bull rushing now, a lot more just like hitting the curve and getting them because they ain't got to worry about getting chipped or getting a uh, double team no more. Yeah. Like before, we used to get chipped, double team. So you had to find, you had to have your own yeah. move to get there. So now it's like a lot, I see a lot more one on ones with guys. And I'm like, they eating out there because, they, yeah, back in the day, it was double, triple team. Now you see a lot of interior guys. Yeah. You know, you see a lot of interior guys get doubled and tripled, maybe, but you don't see it on the on the out as much. You know, maybe JJ Watt, but you know he yeah. plays kind of inside out. But you see, you don't see a lot of guys. I see a lot of guys with one on ones now. I'm looking like wow, like I, I rarely see anybody get chipped. I remember I, I got chipped the whole game one time. I'm like Ward Dunn almost killed me one time. Him and Fred Taylor, <laughs> I mean they they bruised my ribs, man. I, I don't see none of those licks like that no more. So a lot of times I see people getting one on ones. So I think the sack total should go up on. Interesting. Um, do you, has any of the guys, like guys since you retired, reached out to you for technique or just advice or anything? Nah. Really? <laughs> nah. I think I, I think just because I'm so quiet and I don't really be on social media like that no more. But uh, like I said, and also you got you to gotta mold your own game. So you can watch film on guys. Like I didn't yeah. really talk to nobody. I had Brian Cox try to teach me how to work my hips and stuff. But I never really reached out to other guys. I started looking at my own film and started trying to um, <clears throat> start trying to learn myself. You know what I'm saying? Learn what learn what works for you. Learn what you know what you can do to beat the guy. And I think that's how you see a lot of the guys. Because you watch like when I watch like the main pass rushers, nobody has the same moves. They might you, oh you hear the great but like even Khalil Mack. You know everybody has like different moves that I watch. If you sit there and watch, but everybody has something different. It might look the same to some people that don't know football. Oh, yeah, he's a great pass rusher. Yeah. You can see somebody as being a great DN, but not a great yeah. pass rusher. Yeah. Like, like Miles Jarrett, he's a great defensive end. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't say he was a great pass rusher. Some of his moves, I think it's just straight. And I guess that still works as being a pass rusher. But you see people with moves like Von Miller and stuff like that. I see like See, Michael Strahan was a great defensive end. He was a great defensive end. I think uh, – not saying he wasn't a great pass rusher. He can get the quarterback. When I think of pass rushers, I think of the moves, you know, like the people that – you know, the kind of dancers, the Derek Thomases, the – like Lawrence Taylor, the people that, you know, have – you know, you never see yeah. Strahan do a spin move. You never see – you know, everybody kind of knew what his move was, and he perfected it. You know what I mean? But I say a great defensive end because they can play the whole position. And, you know, a great pass rusher is – a guy that, you know, come one and does it. You can see people there and they become great pass rushers, but you see like natural pass rushers too. Do you think if you were coming to the league today, your your all-time sack total would be more because it's mostly one-on-ones or less because you can't really hit the quarterback like you did? I would say um, I, I'm just going to put it like it would probably be about the same or maybe a little more. I think, uh, I, I think it would be a little more simply not because of how they – how the thing is how the practices is. The practices don't wear you down as much. Because my last full year in the NFL was my 14th year, and I had 11 and a half sacks. So I can verify that is if when I was a rookie, when I when I got hurt, because <clears throat> we practiced so much, we practiced three, four, five hours a day compared to now. You get your tour days are two like two hours on the field, yeah. then 45 minute walkthrough. So you have so much time to rest your body and not worry about getting hurt. So I think I'd have been more fresh because I know um, for a fact my last year in the league, I felt like I felt great. Like I played 99% of the plays. See, my big thing was just the wear and tear after you get a lot of uh, a certain age, you know. So I think um, like look at Tom Brady. Look at these quarterbacks and look at these players playing to, you know, receivers playing 14, 15 years average. You see, I like look, look at Larry Fitzgerald because he ain't practicing as hard. Not, not. I take that back. He's practiced hard, but not as long. So he he has a lot more time. The off season is not as strenuous. You know, make it through the off season for a lot of people was a big thing. You see a lot of cats be like, I'm retiring just because of the off season. You know, like just wearing out. Like I don't got no free time. So you got a lot more free time. So I think now you'll see a, you'll definitely see the extension of careers. Like if you want to play t- like like I think the average used to be like three. It's gonna keep going up three, four, five. You know, like. Yeah. Yeah, like like think about a quarterback is going twenty years is is something that people are looking for now. You know, like even yeah. with Matt going to his like like we were talking about Matt uh, going to um <clears throat> like Philip Rivers, all yeah. those guys going to 15, 16, 7 years like easy, like not like 
oh my God, I got to make it through another training camp. Oh my God. You see like uh, even um, like guys are staying longer and it's because of, it's, it's different because of the practice. The practice schedule has been trimmed down so much. And I was just like, wow, if I could stay like, if I could have started now like these cats, they should be, yeah, they, they, I heard people like kind of nagging about like the practice. I'm like, y'all got it great. Like literally. <laughs> um, so you, you had to prep for Brady all the time when you were at the Jets and you had to prep for Breeze all the time when you were at the Falcons. Who, who was harder to, to bring to the ground? Um, I would say, I would say Breeze was simply because he's a lot mobile and, um, Tom, Tom, Tom just had a good O line. Like his, his O line took pride in protecting him. Even though I can get to him sometime, it was kind of tough because he was so quick without the quick with the ball. Drew was just like just a little more elusive, but uh, his linemen maybe weren't as um, I guess they were as good. I, I can't say that. I, I can say they were as good, but I played Drew so much, I got used to his tendencies and used to what's going on, so I knew exactly what to do. And with uh, Tom, it was just like the ball was out quick. And both the guys, it's kind of that was kind of a tough question because once I got past their tackle, I know I'm going to get them down regardless, <laughs> you know. But it was just like uh, like with, with Drew, it was just you're going to be tired with Drew more than Tom because he passed so much. You know, it was so, it was so, it was so quick passes and it was so like quick going like this. So uh, it was, it was both of them was tough, but both of them was fun to get to, you know. Um, why why did you leave the Jets? Um, I didn't get along with the head coach uh, mostly, um, and I think I, I got in trouble one time, and I don't think they really had faith in me after that. You know, I, I had a I had a coach tell me that I was lucky to make the Pro Bowl. I had a coach tell me that, you know, I make black people look bad. I was so you know it was. For me, it was it was tough. Like every every day was tough in New York. And I, th- I think once I lost their faith, when I got in trouble, it kind of like just went downhill. Like they were just kind of like, and like I said, once I lost the head coach, um, you know, it was just pretty much, you know, I because they told me I was gonna be there for my whole career, but then you know they franchised me, and I was like, cool. And uh, we kind of I told them like, you know, we kind of knew once I got franchised, I was gonna be gone. So, you know, it, it happens. You know, it's a part of life. Uh, you know, it's a part of the business. And, and I actually got to come to Atlanta, so I was very happy about the situation. Yeah. You know, they pulled a plug to get me to Atlanta. So that's one thing about New York. I always <clears throat> have love for it. They didn't send me to a team I didn't want to go to. They um they let me choose um pretty much. Um they had they had a deal set with someone else, but they ended up making it happen for me to come to Atlanta. So I've always had love for them. I always have love for Atlanta. I mean, I know I've touched people wrong in both organizations. You can't make everybody happy. You know, so, you know, but um, I definitely appreciate them and I appreciate Arizona. You know, I appreciate all three teams that gave me a chance and an opportunity yeah. to play. I made a Pro Bowl in three different teams. That's pretty good. Yeah. No, because I know a lot of Jets fans are like, why the hell they let him go? They haven't gotten a good pass for just since he left. Yeah, I think it was just um, <laughs> I, I just think me and the head coach didn't get together. I don't know. It yeah. could have been could have been Woody. Like I said, Woody always they never really played defense players like that anyway. Maybe they thought I wasn't. You know, I got hurt a few times. I don't yeah. know what it was, man. I can't lie to you. Yeah. Only thing I know is I was willing to stay there if I, if I could, but that didn't happen. And uh, after I got franchised, I think both of us was kind of like, yeah, you know. Do you think they should get rid of the franchise tag? Um, uh, if, if they're going to give you a franchise tag, they got to give you enough money. So if you get hurt, you'll be all right. Like, if you're going to franchise me, like, if I'm getting 16, you better double that to 32. Like if you're gonna yeah. franchise yeah. somebody, like they, they're saying that you, they, okay, they're saying that you will make whatever the top five players make. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. But let's say if I get hurt or something happened, give me a franchise tag that give me like what I made that last year on my deal, plus whatever they make, and then I'm yeah. fine. So then I got like I'm I feel secure. And yeah. if y'all want to extend and make me a long-term deal, you still can use that money from that. Like, because yeah. it's just like the first year of my deal. If you really want to make a deal, but if you don't want to keep me, say like, yeah. like I think I made one million dollars my last year in New York, and then uh, they gave me six million dollars, which was more than I made all five years I was there. So if you'd have gave me one million more, that'd have been what I made that last year. I had seven million. That's still been more than I made in that whole five-year contract. So I'd have been good. Just like somebody saying you receiver. Yeah. You're making three million a year, 
They say they won't give you 18 because that's the average of the top five. Give them that three also plus 18. Bam, I'm happy then. At least you give me like 21, so I feel like I'm making a little more money. What's the tag number now for edge rushers? Like 18? Probably 18 to 20, right? <sighs> Got to be 18 to 20. And in the new TV deal, that's just, it's about to go up. So. Yeah, it's going to go up a lot. Um, You're going to yeah. see a lot of ridiculous deals. Um, it, It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Yeah. It's a blessing like uh, because – we think about uh, the money we made, but also we got to look back 20, 30 years before we played. Yeah. Like my money I got, when I got that five-year deal for $7 million, I thought I was rich. And even, like, even some of the guys on the team weren't even making that kind of money. Really? And I'm like, dude, this is all I'm getting. And I, like the year I got, like, I was going to retire uh, my last year when I got franchised. It was like $6 million. I said, I'm saving all this money and I'm going to retire because I didn't want to come back to New York and have to deal with the controversy that was going on, all, all of the stuff that was going on, you know, and I just didn't feel comfortable there, you know, so I was like, cool, I can retire, but then, you know, I end up coming to Atlanta, which was a gift and a curse, you know, I yeah. had a good, you know, you know, it's, it's a great thing, you know. Yeah, no, yeah, because I know I was talking to some guys that played like in the 80s, and they're like, hey, we had second jobs, I'm like, that's wild. Exactly, so that's we, crazy. Yeah, I'm, you know, a lot of those guys was on my team, they were just kind of like, I mean, I played with Mo Lewis. I played with uh, <clears throat> Brian Cox, Marvin Jones. I had all old heads on my team. Like, these cats were in their 10th year and stuff, and I was, like, coming in as a rookie. And uh, I, I picked up a lot of their bad traits, but I picked a lot of their good traits, too, as the studying and becoming a professional. But a lot of the bad stuff I also picked up. Oh, my bad. Okay. Um, who was who your, your favorite teammate from your whole career? Uh, I can't say I just had one because, like, different teams, different uh players because like for, I, I guess in New York I got the one year with Brian Cox just because how he taught me how to just to just to learn football because he he's like he wasn't the fastest guy but he was the smartest guy on the field I don't care what people say he knew every play he just went as fast as everybody was but I would say uh I got like three three people from New York but uh, it was um <clears throat> Brian Cox Sean Ellis and uh Lavernius Cole like me and Laverne, it would be crazy if people say, How Laverne is cold and John Abraham? Like he receiver and John a DN. Like it didn't make no sense at all. But me and him, like uh, we, we met each other before pre draft. Oh, cool. We worked out in New Orleans together and we ended up having uh, one of my teammates from South Carolina was one of his teammates in high school. So all of us kind of knew each other from that. And me and Coles ended up being like best friends. I got LC tatted right there, Laverne is cold, oh, my shit. right hand man. That's wild. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah, What's he yeah, up to yeah. nowadays? I haven't heard his name in a long time. Uh, businessman, business, oh, cool. happy, um, trying to get his body back right. You know, all these injuries and stuff. Yeah. Hips and back and concussions and stuff. He's trying to get all that right. But uh, okay. as of now, he's been doing good. Happily family man, doing his oh, thing, cool. you know. Uh, what, he always was a businessman. So he just he just handling life. Oh, cool. What, what about in Atlanta? Were there any guys you, you guys hung out, hung out with? Uh, probably Atlanta? Jonathan Babineau. Oh, cool. Yeah, Jonathan, me and Jonathan Babin was real close. I guess if you play with somebody and they right beside you all the time, yeah, and y'all play good together, y'all become real good friends. But I had like Chauncey Davis too. It wasn't just him. It was like you know, but they, but they were like people that was, you know, there for the long haul. You know, me and John was there. John was there the whole time I was there. So, you know, he even played before and after I got there. So, having um, relationships like that is yeah. something that you can um, have for a long time. Um, did did you spend much time with um D'Angelo Hall? No, nah, ain't nobody really. No, D D really? was yeah, no, no, D was cool. He was my he was my like he, he ain't stayed there long enough. He didn't stay in Atlanta. Okay, because he went to DC. No, yeah. no, we talked, no, we talked, we were friends. No, no, oh, I ain't cool. saying like that, but but D was like, you know, he was kind of in and out with like <laughs> like yeah, because he was only like a year and he was gone. I was like, that like he, you know, he was talking so much trash, so they put his they put his locker right beside mine. I was like, this guy. This guy here is uh Dita is one of a kind, man. He's a, yeah. he's a great he's a great dude, man. Yeah. Great father, great great all around guy. You gotta understand, yeah. he was in the league when he was nineteen. I didn't know that. Yeah, he how, came how'd that happen? How'd that happen? Because he got, I think he came to college early. He got see 17, 18, 19, and he came wow. he left early. Yeah, he was like nineteen years old. That's, he he's on the, the Washington broadcast. He's awesome. He's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, wow. he's doing a good job. He do his thing. Do you do you have any funny stories about uh, Roddy White? Man, I got so many stories about Roddy. Roddy, like, uh, you know, both of us from South Carolina, man. So uh, a good story about Roddy is um, when you, everybody, see, people didn't know Roddy was a state champion in wrestling. In wrestling? In yeah, people didn't know that. 
Like nobody knows that he was a state championship in wrestling. Yeah, you think he went like twice or three times in a row, some crazy number, but he was a wrestler and he played receiver. So we was in the locker room and one of these big, big old lines talking trash. Just, yeah, Roddy, Roddy, I bet you I'll swing. Come on, come on, man. Roddy gripped him. <laughs> he gripped him. And, and hey, Roddy, would, Roddy was deep. That's what I knew Roddy wouldn't play with, though. But Roddy, I'm, no, I, I'm trying to think what lineman was that. It was one of our linemen. I can't remember if it was one of our starters or one of the backups. It was one of the linemen. I, his name is uh, not, I can't remember his name right now. But he locked over Roddy. He could not move Roddy. It was just so funny because Roddy, like, he was like, he was trying to get all up. Roddy had, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was it was embarrassing for the lineman though. Know? Rod, Roddy had him racked up, man. That, that's crazy. And Roddy is Roddy all muscle now. Roddy was all muscle, but it was funny as I don't know what because nobody like like literally nobody didn't know about that, you know. So it was funny when he tried to. I guess somebody must have heard about it and said yeah. something to the lineman, and then the lineman. I'm, I'm, I wish I could remember who was lineman that dumb lineman that was. Yeah. <laughs> that's why. Um, yeah. who, who who's the best quarterback in Falcons franchise history, Matt Ryan or Mike Vick? Uh. I would say who brought more to Atlanta, Mike Vick. But you talking about stats and who took him to the Super Bowl, yeah. um, won many NFC uh, championships, uh, you know, the notoriety, probably a Hall of Famer. But we know he's a Hall of Famer. I got to say Matt Ryan. I mean, his, his jersey probably going to be this, uh, what the next one retired, the number. They, I don't think they're going to let anybody else get this number. They don't retire like numbers like that. Like, you know, people still, who still got seven? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> somebody, every other year, they another somebody in 21, you know. So, but uh, I think Matt Ryan is going to go straight in the Raptors after he's done. And probably him and Julio. They might be a little pair group, just two and 11 right up beside each other. You can't see anybody else wearing the two or the 11. Who's the toughest running back for you to tackle your whole career? Toughest running back. I'm trying to think about it. Uh, cause we didn't really tackle that much. Oh, Michael Turner. Yeah, Turner. Yeah, yeah. Turner was tough. That's because we, we had hit him one time in live practice. Yeah, he was tough. Like in the game, it's totally different though. Yeah. You know, like hitting somebody in the game is easy. You can see me tackle Marshawn Lynch. You can see me tackle Jacob, Brandon Jacobs, you know, like cause you know you gotta know how to hit those guys. You hit them before they get started. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm the only thing I'm blessed because I never had a, I never had to like be sitting there waiting 10 yards and yeah. seeing them coming like this. I, I, I would have, I, I can just side swipe them. I never had to hit them head on. You know what I mean? So for me, they weren't really that tough to tackle. I just kind of rope them like you rope a, a, get one of the little pigs or something, grab them, you roll, kind of like that. You know, so they, they weren't really that hard. But uh, I think uh, Michael Turner was, I, I try to hit them head on the crack that was bad. But, uh, I would say Reggie Bush was tough too, though. Reggie Bush, like the the guy and the Ladanian Thomas. So I can't tell I can't tell you who the main one because I never got to really go hit. I ain't missed too many tackles. One thing we didn't do: old people don't miss tackles. <laughs> Are there any guys in the league today you're you're glad that you never have to match up with? Uh, not really, because like I said, there's more one on one. Even Derrick Henry. Oh no, no! I told you I'm gonna catch him before he gets started. <laughs> All right. You know, I'm gonna catch. I'm gonna catch before you start. See, you gotta understand how I played. I played yeah. behind the line. I didn't play on the line. Like, I know. Like, he, he's I, still yeah, coming. See, he's still coming. It, I said, I'm gonna try to get him behind the line. I can hit him and hold him. I see. This was wrong, people. They they trying to go just straight up and stand. They slowing down. You gotta go straight at him. Like and like I said, by the time you get the ball like this, I'm gonna be either hitting him or somebody. Like it ain't gonna be no kind of yeah. I don't got no problem grabbing on and holding to somebody else get there. They be trying to like, they really be trying to run up to them and tackle them, get them, hold them like this. See, that's how we used to do back in the day. We used to make each other hold each other. First person get there, secure the tackle. Second person try to strip the ball out. Now they be trying to make these little, no, he one on one, man. Just just make sure that guy stand up with you to somebody else get there. You come on, now. It, 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 it ain't being the pump if you just hold the guy up to everybody else get there. It ain't, it ain't bad to do that. Were you, were you at the game with the Super Bowl against the Patriots? Was I at the game? No. What were your thoughts on that? I ain't going to lie to you. I, I kind of knew the Patriots were going to win. You told me really? they played the Falcons? You told me they played the Falcons? Yeah, 28-3. to three, Yeah. yeah. I, man, I just know how Tom Brady them is. Like, it was kind of crazy at halftime, and I was just like, man, because I was in the game when we played San Francisco and we lost. So we, we were playing San Francisco and this when they, they played Baltimore in the Super Bowl. Oh, the lights went out. We were, yeah, we was up 17. It was like zero. 
you know, I'm at halftime crying. So I've seen it happen. I'm looking like, man, y'all don't, don't clap now. Nah, Cause, and then I talked to Bill Belichick. I literally talked to Bill Belichick cause I was, um, this when I left the Falcons and I was traveling around the team to team and I talked to Bill Belichick and he was like, how in the hell y'all, y'all let San Francisco come back and win. I said, Bill, I have no clue. He said, look, one thing about me, I'm gonna keep my, I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna keep it going. Like we're gonna put that, we're gonna put our foot on their throat. Yeah, said, y'all didn't do that, and and I, and I always remember that. I was like, okay, they up. I said they playing Bill now. I said they do, they might end up trying to do that little same thing, do the same stuff instead of keep going, and it end up being the same. I was like, wow, and, and it was just no, I, I'm serious, I, and I wasn't hating on the Falcons at all. Yeah. I was just like, man, you gotta watch New England. Yeah, and I, I didn't know, you know, I knew, but I didn't know, you know what I mean. Do, do you think that loss is still in the back of the mind of like Ryan and Julio? It's kind of thrown them off for the last couple of years. Hell yeah, it, it, it got to be. I don't care who you, you can say we passed that we over it. No, because every time you talk to somebody, what they gonna say? That's all they talk about now is how they can't keep a lead. Like once, like once you uh once you do something once and you do it twice, and they they gonna keep talking about it. And then like like you said, you can say it is not in their mind, but that'll be a lie. Cause you watch the game, they're up. And you can even even the crowd and people once they once they get up and then they start letting people come back. It's like all the it just deflate, and that's something they gotta. Um, that's something that might not ever ever get rid of in Atlanta if somebody don't come and stop. Like they say, if you want to do it, you gotta you know wipe it away this year. Once y'all gotta leave, you gotta yeah. finish. You know what I mean? If they wipe away this year, you don't talk about it no more. You know, like think about think about Buffalo Bills. They, it happened to them four times. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't one time, one two, yeah. one three. One, it was four times because they couldn't get over that first hump. No, it's unbelievable. Do you think that game, that loss, was the kind of the beginning of the end for Dan Quinn? Well, uh, well, he would have won it. We know he still have been here. Oh, of course, yeah, you know, yeah. So that's all I can say. I can't, you know, I can't, say, you know, he might have still been here now if they won that Super Bowl. You know, he, he would have been because that'd have been the first Super Bowl Atlanta ever. You know. So that would have been his name would have been engraved in this place forever. But I can't really say yay or nay, but you know, he's not here now. I think the Super Bowl just making to the Super Bowl gave him his chance to stay here just that long afterwards. You know, the aftermath and then staying that long, I think that definitely has something to do with uh making it to the Super Bowl though. Um, how long did you play with uh Darrell Reeves for the Jets? I never played with Darrell Reeves. Oh, really? No, I I'm like years mixed up. I got my years no, no, mixed no. Up. I mean, I was going there too. No, people don't. A lot of times, people don't even know I played for the Jets. So for you really? saying, for you even asking, is big because a lot of people don't even know the era when I played because it was like, when did you play? You played for the Jets? Like, no, for real. Because you kind of like, did you play with the Rams? Like, no, yeah. because not nah, because when I played in New York, it was like I played six years there, and it was kind of like oblivious years. People know about it because they like, yeah. well, I know John Abraham. I know I heard that name before because. Yeah. My first three years, I think I made it. No, my first, yeah, my first three years, I made a Pro Bowl. So, you know, my name was kind of big. That was yeah. 2001, 2002, 2003. Then my next two years, I didn't. So, you know, everybody kind of, yeah. no, we knew he played for the Jets. I remember in that green and white, but they don't remember like when I played because we didn't have any. Um, One thing I can say about my career, I got no memorable games. I got no games. Really? That you can, no, I don't got no games that like I got no Super Bowls. I got no uh, NFC Championship games. I got a uh, got Pro Bowls. I got five of those, yeah. but I got no games that you can rewind and watch games. Like, oh, you remember? I got like that's when I see a lot of people have the Super Bowls, even if you ain't won it or you like you can play in it. If you play in it, have a sack or two. Like it's kind of like Von Miller got the Super Bowl, you yeah. know? And, yeah, and he's like he's yeah. good for that though. He don't got to play no other games. He's good for that. Like, uh, what's that? What's that receiver that was from? The Giants got that one catch in the uh, Super Bowl. Oh, Tyree, uh, David Tyree. Yeah, David Tyree. He's a superstar there still to the day. Like I, I literally be seeing him on the sideline like this. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. no, I'm serious though. And 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 I, I was uh, well, I was in the game. I was in the game that Tom Brady. That's a good thing, yeah. But I wasn't. I didn't make no play in it. But, but you did. But you did say yeah. that you sacked Bledsoe before it happened. So you kind of put that first lick on it, and then the second one oh, knocked man. him out. It, don't count. Like if I wasn't that person to make that hit, you know, I came, you know, when you see the hit, like I said, like I that, that's the only thing I'm missing in my career. Like even if it was a game that went to, like even um uh, what was the uh, that miracle game we had in New York? Uh 
when they played the Dolphins, they came back and beat the Dolphins from like 30 points or something at halftime. Yeah. And Jumbo Elliott called it like a touchdown. Man, it, that game right there was one of the you gotta you gotta check it out though. I'll it was that. one of the best games ever. I wasn't in that game. I was hurt. It was just like so many uh games that are around me. And like being one being one game away from the Super Bowl really hurt though. Cause I um I just wanted to play in. I knew if I played in the Super Bowl, I, I could be forever minute. And it probably helped my um my Hall of Fame stuff, you know. I think right now I'm 13th. Yeah, I saw you're in the ballot. You're in the ballot the past couple of years. Yeah, but being on the ballot, you can be there until you six to seven years old, man. And like I said, how they playing now, the sack numbers are gonna go up, and the more they go yeah. up, the more I go down. But uh, I know I passed uh, DT. You know, I passed uh, Lawrence Taylor. Um, I wanted to get in the top five. I, I didn't make the top five, but but uh, and I got I got and I got uh, my hundred and ninety two games. So that for my 133 sacks, that's the most sacks in the, in the amount of games. So, oh, cool. so there's some stuff that I can look for and be like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, well, the Falcons, you know, the Falcons yeah. are so underrepresented. Like, I feel like one of these is like, I know the past couple of years are like, uh, there are people who are saying, oh, there's no Broncos in. And now all the Broncos are getting in. And then maybe in a couple of years and they say, oh, the Falcons are getting in. And like, all right, who's the top of the list? John Abraham. So, yeah. It's, it's, that's yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, uh, It'll be something nice, you know, one day. Like I said, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. I can see me being like 60 or something, and they be like, oh, you see, you know. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, let's go, let's go. Uh, one last question for you. Do you have any fun uh, Pro Bowl stories? I know you went to a bunch of them. Uh, fun Pro Bowl story. I don't know. I, I got a lot of stories. Some of them, what are not for TV? <laughs> All right, that's it. Sure, <laughs> NFT not for TV or whatever. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I got, I got some. Uh, I got, I got a. It's like I got so many of them, man. It's just like uh, I think I think that my first uh, Pro Bowl was probably my most memorable because uh, me and Richard Seymour. Well, that was my second one, Pro Bowl. I'm sorry. No, it was my first. My second. It was my second. I can't. It was, it was my second <laughs> because uh, Richard came in the league. Richard, no, I I made my first, and Richard came in the league and. And he just start ripping stuff. So we uh we in the Pro Bowl, we hanging out together. It was it was great though, man. But uh me and Seymour end up breaking down on the middle of the road. And at the time both of us had girlfriends and everything. So they was just like they thought we were just out partying. We literally just sitting on top, like in both our both our ladies, you know, his wife now, but my my um my ex fiance, they literally was hanging up on us would not answer the phone. So we sat on there like to the early morning. To, to one of my friends finally came be like five o'clock. He got practice like at a certain time. So they came at like five o'clock and picked us up. Now we lived on the side of the road. I had this big old H2 Hummer and he had like a Porsche car. Now, now he had a Porsche, but he was riding with me and the Hummer broke down. So, and I don't know if you know how far Wacky Keys from the Elon is like an hour away or something like that. So oh, this is in Hawaii? No, no. Yeah, this is in Hawaii, yeah. Damn. Yeah, we, we got, we, we, we broke down right like right there and we was calling they were just hanging up on they thought we was out we're like no please answer the phones so we that was one that was a good story man that's one of them and then my friend passed by and saw us on the side of the road and i promise you then, then when we got home they were just like oh we saw each other like, man y'all had us sitting on the side of the road it was that was that was one of them um classic stories for me man they gotta get triple a in hawaii that's, that's man good. not at that time it was like <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's unreal oh that that's really all the questions really happy really appreciate you taking time to chat for a few minutes today oh no question man thank you for having me man